Hi, hi. Welcome, welcome to, to Welcome on the to Run. Run. Web Socket this is part Web two. Socket Part Two. In this video, we're going to continue from where we left off in Part One, and this time we want to be able to support multiple users being able to maintain their to-do list. I'll go into the WebSocket Part One directory run our client and our backend applications. So, okay. So that's what our application looked like. It was a simple to-do application that uses WebSocket to talk to our backend, which was written in Go. So in this video, what I would like to do is support multiple users. What I mean by that is this. Let's say I created to-do, and I were to open up another browser. So let me get rid of another browser here and pull it on the screen. And as you can see, in this browser, I see the same to-do that I created in Firefox. So this is Firefox on the left, and on the right, I have Safari. But I just want to use two different browsers to show you that since it's running the same application or connected to the same application, there's no concept here of different users. If I add a to-do here, you'll see that if I were to refresh on this page, well, it shows the same to-do. So we have a WebSocket connection it'd be nice if I'm connected as the same user on multiple browsers. Well, I should see that reflected also. We'll get to that in part three. But in part two, at least what we want to do is to be able to separate our to-do by users. And so I'll keep it simple. Instead of trying to develop like a full login page and all these sort of things, we're not trying to learn Arella in this web series right now. We're focusing on Go and certain things you can do in Go. And so we'll restrict our focus to simply saying that we want to find some way of having multiple users. And so we'll add a second text box, which allows us to type in a username. And that's going to be representative of the user who we're going to consider to be locked in. Okay. Um, and then we'll use that information to keep our to do separate. So before I get into that, though, there's some housekeeping I need to do. So let's stop our application, or at least the front end. And if you haven't done any web programming using like Node.js sort of packages and framework, you might not know that there's this directory called Node module. So let me show you this directory. And all the packages that you require for your applications are maintained here. So not that that really is important, but it's sort of important for, um, for us to save some memory on what I want to do. Um, so if you look, these are all the packages that it needs and so on. And a result of all those packages, it takes a significant amount of space. And so let's do minus S and star. Ah, let's see, minus S. Let's do D zero. And so if you look at this mod node modules directory, it's 341 megs. And so what I've been doing so far with go run project is just simply copying them. So I copy part one, part two, and so on. So if you go back and you look, you'll see I have like, you know, web app one, web app two, and so on, server sent event one and two, but those projects were relatively small. So if I run the U again here, um, you'll see those projects were relatively small, just a few kilobytes. And so it was okay for me to copy them, but look at this WebSocket project. It's a whopping 300 megs. So I don't want you to waste your space and I want you to be aware of that. So what I'll do instead is I'll simply call this WebSocket and in Git, I will tag it as part one and part two and part three. I didn't do that before because I didn't want to force you to use Git if you didn't really want to use Git. 
but I still wanted to make the project available through Git, which it is. So, so you can fetch this project from GitHub if you haven't been doing that already. So, okay, so that's the housekeeping. That's a little bit sidetracked. So I'll speed up where I'll move this because this is, again, it's not that important, but it's sort of important because it wasted so much space and I wanted you to be aware of the space that you use it. Okay, so that takes care of that. And so now if you pull this down from GitHub, you'll have that and you can simply um, check it out based on the tag. So now we can go back to our WebSocket project directory. And now my Golang program is running, but this directory sort of doesn't exist anymore. So uh, let's go back to WebSocket server. And then I could rerun my Go product program. Okay, that's my backend. And now CD to the client. Okay. So um, that's coming up and there it is. So what I'll do is add a text box for the username. We should in our editor. So I wanna work on the client side first. So what I'll do is, here's our input. What I'll do is I'll wrap this in a div tag for now. And I wanna wrap this in a div tag. As you'll see later, I wanna be able to manage a set of controls, these inputs and so on, these controls as a group. So let's see what, what I mean. And I do not want this to be the submit button. Instead, I just want this to be a regular button and I want it to bind to a do login when I click on it. And I want this to, the value here, this input to be bounded to the username property. Okay, so it seems like I have to add two things. I have to add a username property and a do login, but at least let's see what our UI looks like. And so it sort of looks okay. Um, hmm, I have a two inputs for some reason. So let's go take care of that. Okay, just one one input. Okay, so that sort of look okay. So I'll type a username, click login, and it should fetch the list of to do's that I already have if I have any. And so that might look something like this. Click login. And once that happened, of course, I don't want to see the login box anymore, right? But let's take care of one thing at a time. So within my app.js, I need to add, like I said, some more properties. So I need that and Let's think about what we want to happen. When I, on my user interface, and I first load up the application, first of all, if I refresh this, I see the to-do. I shouldn't be able to create any to-dos at this point. Right? I shouldn't be able to create any to-dos without first logging in. So it seems like I should really be hiding all of this. So I want to have the idea of a user that's already logged in. And I'm, I will set login to true once the user login. So until they log in, I should hide this property. Or rather, I want this to be shown if they're login. And so let's see if it's hidden now. And so it's hidden. Okay, um, maybe I should do the same thing here, but of course I won't have any users. So I shouldn't probably shouldn't worry about that. I won't have any users as first, so I'll leave that for now. 
Uh, let's just do it anyway. It will work fine if I don't put a here, but it's only because we already have some data populated, that's why. So, um, but let's put it on there. Okay, so this should go away. All right, so now all I have is the login. And once I enter, click the button to log in, my do login method should be called. So let's write that method. And so let's go here. And if I log in successfully, what does that mean? Well, it means I should send the username that is there to the backend, and the backend should return um, the list. Well, we already have that. Every time we create this WebSocket, do this initialization when this page loads up, we're creating a WebSocket, send hello, and that triggers the backend to say, oh, you said hello, it means you sort of log in, I guess. Um, and then it sends us our whatever to-dos that we have. So really what we should do is just simply move all of this work that we're doing here into login. So it's only when you click login, then it sends, it does the WebSocket connection and it sends, says hello. Well, we want the backend to know which user login logged in, right? So we should take care of if there's no user name when the user press login, we shouldn't do anything. So if there, we don't have a username, then we should simply return. Okay, if we have a username, then we do what we were doing before. We connect the WebSocket and so on. And since this is in our, this function is being called as part of our app object, then this, that socket and all this other stuff should work. However, we have this function that's within this function. And we talked about this already. This is just a JavaScript problem that we had to use this app variable. And the app variable was set in the constructor because all of this code was in the constructor. So we actually need this now inside of our do login. So we want to say this, which is the op app object to be assigned to app variable. And then now we can use it. Okay, so that looks good. Um, at this point, we still don't tell our backend which user or the username. So if we assume that our backend is updated to send only the to-dos for this user, then everything should work fine. Now, right now, if we run our code, our backend doesn't care about a user, so it will just send, simply send all of the users that we have. But now that we have this, oh, we said that once you successfully log, is simply set is login to be equals to true. Uh, so let's see. Okay, um, run our application. And so there we are, and let's do Bob. And we'll click login. And as you can see, this shows up because we set login to be true. And we got the list of users. All right. And let's try refreshing again and see if that works. And we say Bob. And we do login. And again, remember, this is not really the back end is just simply sending us what it has. All we're seeing now is how the front end is operating. Seems like we should now hide our login once we log in, our login box. So let's do that. And so we can take this, put this there, and we can do a not login, or we can simply say hidden. So hit hide this div if the user is locked in. And so when our page refreshes, as you can see, this is shown. We type Bob, click login, that's hidden, and now we get these other ones. Okay, so this is looking good. Well, something is broken because now I'm entering and, oh, I have to click add to do. Um, when I click enter, it did not work. And I'm not sure why that would stop working because we did not change the submit, which we call add to do. We did not change this from a submit. Okay, maybe I should make sure that this is set to be a type button. 
so it doesn't cause us any problems because maybe this is also showing up as a submit so uh, let me check that again so Bob login and then let's do to do for enter yep works again okay so this it seems to be working on the front end and if we look on the back end we should see that uh, we're getting these messages of course we don't see anything with username in it because our back end doesn't have that code so let's scroll down to our server and the first thing we want to do is the request from the front end should include the username and that's a string and we'll add our struct field to it and so that's fine so our hello message will be this the type of message saying that oh it's hello and all the other fields will not be there okay so what we need to do now is in this for loop once we read the cl client request and it's valid now we've been printing out the client message but let's annotate it with some more details by putting pound and then what we want to do now is with the client request we want to switch if you're doing hello right now we sort of defaulted so that regardless if you do add or delete we just sort of look up um, the to do and send back the current list of to do but remember we need to do this per user so the to do variable that we have right now is simply a slice of to do we don't want that we want to do's to still be a slice of to do's but we want our database if you want to think of it that way to be a map of string or username to to do's so this is going to be a map and so we have to in it create this map of course So now we have a database, which is this map of username to to-dos. All right, so if we have that, now when we get a request from the front end, we should check and see if a username is provided. If a username is not provided in this request, we should just simply return. All right, um, so that takes care of that now that we have a user it seems to me that what we really want to be able to do is to say regardless of what app operation we're doing whether we're doing an add or a delete or we're saying hello we should be able to just look up that user and assign them to this to do variable and send that back so the client to do should be able to this should be equal to this variable to do's which we look up so we have a variable here called var to do's nice of type to do's and it's empty but if we of course want to add a user i think i'll make this a function and so let me cut this and what i want to this to do is to be to do's equals to add to do i'm going to pretend that this function talks to a database and I don't know, it could be a MongoDB, MySQL, or something, or graph database. And so I'm hiding the fact of how, what the database, how the database is implemented in this function add to do. And so the only thing I need is the user and the to do. So right, because if I was going to add a to do, I just need to know the to do and which user to add it to. And then I'm going to assume that this function will just return me an updated list of to-dos that I can send back and remove I'll make it operate the same way too where it returns a updated list of to-dos after it remove the to-dos with this ID for this user so of course I have to update that and for our hello we should probably do the same sort of thing um, where get to do's for this user All right and so i have a couple of functions to write and if i can do this then i get the to do's when it's hello i add a to do 
all this, by the time I get here, this variable to do's is the correct result of depending on my operation or my type of message, and then I can send that back to the user. So again, this part of this code could be hidden away with SQL to a server or to MySQL or some to, to MongoDB or some graph database or database or something like that. Okay, this could be retrieving data from that external data source or a file or whatever you want, or over the network, you know that sort of thing. Remove. Well, we said remove change to username string. Okay, so this now looks like we've updated our backend to deal with having a username and keeping to do separated by using a map. So let's stop our backend compile and rerun again and let's see if this works. So let me refresh. So let Bob log in again. We'll log in. No to dos. Let's add a to do and we don't see anything come back. Okay, so is this a problem? So message from client, we know that's how we get to this part, but if zero is equals to client name, so let's look. So username, ah, username is empty, so we're returning early. So why is the username empty? Well, let's go back to app.js and Hello, we're sending the message. We're now within this function, and this that user refers to this function and not to our app function. So we really need to say app. And that's why our hello message does not contain a value. So let's try this again. So Bob should log in. Click login. And there is Bob. And we have nothing. Okay. All right, so we didn't save anything because before we weren't including Bob's name in the messages. Well, that reminds me that when it comes to adding a message, we'll have the same problem. We do not include the user who's adding this message. We deal with it in the back end already, but we don't include that here. So we should add the username. So let's just do the same thing. And I'll copy this and paste it there and there so we're saying delete message for this user of course the old app thing doesn't apply here app is just a variable within the login function we needed that because of these other function so here this should change to this it, this is confusing to you the javascript we're doing we only use this and i had to use app it's really a mess in javascript okay so now let's try and see if we can add a message. So log in again. Can we change our back end, our front end? So it's refresh. No data. Okay, that's fine. It says empty. No, no to dos. Let's add it to do. To do one. Press enter. And as you can see, we send that to do to the back end. And it was saved and we got it back. Now it's great. Now, does this work if we use a different user? Remember, we use Bob. So let's use Sam and I'll click login and notice for Sam, we said Sam, hello, and we got back an empty list. That's exactly what we want. And so if we do to do two, for example, you know, just to show you how it's keeping them separate, we could see for Sam, we're looking up just his to do, and we can go back here for Bob and we can say to do two. And so the list of to-dos for Bob is being kept separate from the list of to-dos for Sam. And so we now have support for users to have separate to-dos. So that takes care of that. So that was pretty easy. Um, we can uh, refresh our browser here. And again, Sam can go log in. And when he logs in, he gets his to-do. And of course, we can remove to-dos. That's not a problem. So refresh, again, no to-dos for Sam, but if he logs in, yep, no to-dos because he deleted his last to-do. Well, there's still this problem that I showed earlier, which is what happened when we toggle to-do. 
if I mark this to do as done and I refresh my browser, this was Bob, and I log back in as Bob, you can see that even though I marked this previously as done, there's nothing that's happening in the back end when I toggle my to do. So let's fix that. So here's where I run into a problem and I'll show you the problem and then I'll show you how I got around it. So what we want is when you toggle a to do as completed, as we know that though, you want the checkbox to update this property, which is to do that done. But you also want a function to be called so that you can be notified that the property on this to do checkbox was changed and a property or a field of the to do was updated. So you can send that to the back end so the back end can store it. All right. So it seems to me like we need to have a click that trigger and we want to be able to say toggle or update to do toggle, something like that. Toggle to do. And we want to say which to do we want to toggle. So toggle to do done maybe and say to do that ID. So we pass the ID of the to do that we want to toggle. Uh, that reminds me here for removal, all we need is the ID for the to do we want to remove. So when it comes to removing a to do, all we really need is the ID. So we don't really, really need to pass the whole to do. Not that it really matters, but just pass what you need and that's it. Okay, so we need another function, which we will call, so let me write it above here, toggle to do done. And it's the ID, and we know the user, um, well, maybe I should put this down closer down to the bottom. So it's closer to these other functions that's similar to. Okay, so it's similar to one of these functions here. And that is when we want to toggle the to do, we simply just want to send a message that says, what we want to do is update the done field maybe. And because we can imagine that we can also allow for editing to do's, but I'll leave that as something you can do. So this is just one field, the done field. So if you know to update the done field, you can suddenly update the description. So let's copy this and put this in here. So our message type, we want to do toggle done field, toggle done on the ID. This is the, the to do ID. Username, same thing. We send that message and we send it to our back end. Okay. Now, why am I doing it this way? Well, if I send it to the back end, I know in the back end, if I can update that this message, I'll get back in updated list. So I can just simply call this message update, for example, update to do, and that should do it, right? It doesn't really matter. And I just send the entire to do, which is whatever containing the new value that it has. So if I just instead do this, I can t take care of handling just updating it to do period. And it's not really have to be restricted to just toggle in one field. So if I did that instead, and on my UI, instead of just simply saying that I'm passing the ID of the field to toggle, I can simply say this and update to do. And what I'm hoping for is that by clicking the checkbox, I have it bounded to this property. It will change this accordingly and call my function. This is where I run into a problem. Let's, let me show you what the problem is. I'll go back here and I'll put console.log and update to do. And so if we go here and developer tool and web console. Okay. So clear that. And let's do Bob login. I'll check toggle here. Update is not a function. Ah, let's see. Update to do. Okay. I don't have that in my HTML. Oh, update to do. There we go. And so let's do this again and Bob login. Oh, there we go. 
So now we've logged in as Bob. We see our two to-dos. Let me toggle one. So when I toggle this, look what happened. All of my to-dos are gone. There's a problem. And if you scroll down, you'll see that for this function, it gets us a to-do with the ID tree, which is probably fine. But where's the description? Where's the value for the description? I mean, the done, we, it doesn't seem like we have a, a value for done. So something is wrong. And I am not sure exactly. I'm still learning Arella. But I think there is a, a race condition that's happening where you check the to-do and it tries to update this, but it also tries to call the function. And so as a result, things are now working the way you think they should work. So we still want to be able to, without the check that bind, you wouldn't have the checkbox reflecting the value of the to-do. But instead, what I think we need to do is actually call a toggle. And this is the only way I found to get around it. I'll do some more research to see how to actually solve this. Um, but this is what I had to do. I say I want to toggle the to-do value. And in this case, I'll simplify it by saying I just want to toggle the ID of this to-do. And in code, to done flag and want to do the ID. And so instead of trying to send the entire, so I just simply say toggle that. And when I say toggle this, it sends it to the back end. So let's call this um, mm -hmm. toggle done flag. So that's our message. And what I want is my entire page shouldn't refresh just because I send a message to the back end. Now, I have to, of course, deal with this message. The back end doesn't know about this message. And that's why our page was emptied because we sent a message the back end doesn't know. And so if you look at our Go code, when we get to the bottom, we, if we, it's not a message we know, well, then it would look up and find an empty list. So if you send a message it doesn't understand, well, it just sends you back an empty list. Now, we could choose to say that if it doesn't understand the message, just send you whatever to-dos are there. That's all up to you. Um, so let's put in our new message. So once we get here, we like to toggle specifically the done flag from whatever it is and then send that back. So Because this, our message from the front end look very much like our message, like our delete message, all right? It was just the ID and what operation we want to perform on that ID. In this case, we want to toggle the done flag, whereas before we could say remove. So we, that's all we really need. And so um, I can copy this. Uh, let's copy it here and Is that what I call my function? Toggle done. Yep, toggle done. And user input, dot, dot, dot. Get all the to-dos. Well, I don't think I really need all the to-dos. Um, well, fine. Uh, let's iterate over the to-dos. And then if the ID is equals to the ID of the item we're looking at, then we should change that ID, that object ID. So we should do I remember this is going to be a copy. V is going to be a copy, so we can't change V. So we actually have to change the to do in the database. Okay, so we want this that done to be equals to the not of it. Well, negate it in other words. So I negate the current value of the same property, and now I could have made it easy also by just simply typing this because that would be the case where it's the opposite of this value. But of course, I, don't, I can't update V because V would be a copy. So I can't update V. And then once I get here, I simply want to return 
um, the updated database okay that's what I want to return yeah and we already have to do's so this should be fine uh, not database uh, to do's they have to do's that I that's what I mean okay so oh there's I so yeah so I have to know which one in the database okay so this seems to be correct now so I grab the slice I iterate over it and I find the matching one and I update that one in the slice so not the copy okay so this seems to be okay and maybe if this is correct it, I expect it to work so I stop this rerun it and now let's log back in as Bob it's gonna be empty create some to do's yep there we go oh, I'm saying to do so let's remove this because that's wrong. I check this. It looks like it sent a message to our backend. The UI reflects a value. We can check it off. Uh, doesn't look like I'm updating the backend though when I check this. Um, so type delete, but I'm not getting the toggle. So my toggle message is not doing anything. Uh, let's see what's going on, what's broken. So, UI. So I click that trigger, toggle to do done. This, I want to make sure this is the same name as my function here. And it is ID. Oh, this is trying to reference a to do. Um, I don't have a to do anymore. It's, so let's see now if this works. Okay. So, Bob, login. Okay, there's this to do. Check that. Okay, and now you can see messages are going to the back. In the background, I can have all these to do that done toggle messages. And so, to see if it really works though, I should log in from another browser, like here, and refresh. Login as Bob. I should be able to get my to-do and I can see that it is updated. I hopefully this makes sense. If you still have questions or you think I did something wrong, definitely let me know. I appreciate the constructive feedback. Um, let me know how I can do things better. If you want to contribute, um, here are some ways to contribute. Contribute if you can afford to. Otherwise, to that, keep enjoying the videos. Subscribe, spread the word. Take care. Bye. See you in the next video.